Welcome back everyone to Blackthorn Prod. My name is Noah and in this video I want to share with you a whole week in my life. I am an indie game developer and YouTuber based in France and I'm making a game with Unity called The Dreadful Whispers. It's a 2D puzzle platformer about overcoming fear, which I plan on putting up on Steam, something I've always dreamed about. But before we dive into this crazy awesome game dev week, check this out. These incredible effects, sprites and animations are from Production Crates, the sponsor of this video. This is a treasure trove website filled to the brim with amazing assets. I wish I discovered it sooner. They have hundreds of musics and sound effects you can use and implement inside your game project, like monster growls, explosions, sword clashes, and just so much more. If you're in need for some super cool animations or effects to add to your game worlds, also check out Production Crate's massive collection. It's only $49 for a pro membership, which lasts a whole year. So at the start of this week, I had to go through the daunting task of playing through the dreadful whispers and fix lots of little bugs. This is when procrastination can hit very hard, eyelids grow heavy, browsing social media seems very, very tempting, other game projects seem a lot more fun to work on, the sun outside is shining, but oh, oh damn it, stop. So here I am madly clicking away, getting all this rather boring but necessary work done in order to have a solid, playable build I can pass on to a few people to get their feedback. So on Monday night I was done, what a relief, and it wasn't that bad really. I thought there would be more issues to fix. Now I await feedback to improve the dreadful whispers. In the meantime though, on Tuesday morning I began work on a collectible system for my game. The Dreadful Whispers is a pretty linear adventure, but there are multiple paths the player can choose from, as well as several endings. I wanted to entice players to explore the game more than once, so spreading throughout the world weird collectibles they could then view in a neat menu sounded like a lot of fun to make, but also be an extra source of motivation to play through at least twice. It's very easy for players to finish the game having not even seen half of what the world has to offer. I think the collectible system will make that clear. Perhaps I'll even put a message when the credits roll telling players how much percentage of the game they have completed. What do you guys think? One of the challenges of making the collectibles was coding a saving system, but this was all done pretty easily with Unity's player prefs. We make a number of collectibles variable, so for now there are 31, and so make 31 collectible player prep variables with a simple for loop. And whenever the player collides with a collectible, we set one of those 31 collectibles equal to 1. And so in the menu, if a collectible is equal to 1, it shows up. If not, it's hidden behind a question mark. Player prefs isn't the most secure way of making a saving system, but I don't mind. I doubt people will go through the trouble of hacking the game just to unlock these weird squishy monsters. My brother Liam, who is now on his long summer holiday break, helped me code this simple system. Big thanks to him. He was also busy making his own little game. He's made quite a few with me, but never has he completed one completely on his own. And that's what he did this week. On Tuesday, he finished Cubic Schusser. I'll pass him the mic just a moment. Hey guys, Liam here. For such a long time, my lack of drawing skills stopped me from even trying to make a game on my own. I'm glad I put an end to that. Cubic Shooter is entirely made up of three super simple sprites, a square, circle and triangle. I think the game still looks and feels great because of all the work I put into game juice. So adding lots of particle effects, screen shake, a shockwave effect, cool lighting using Noah's soft shapes technique and more. I also only use sound effects and music from Production Crate's giant library to bring this world to life. So you have no excuses guys, you don't need to know how to draw well to make a game. This is my first solo project and I intend to keep improving and making more. It would be so cool if you played my little game and told me what you think. Alright, it's Noah again. Really happy my bro finished his first game on his own. He's also been working super hard trying to find awesome sponsors for Blackthorn Prods, like Production Crate. 
And yes, we're collaborating on making a really cool little tutorial series on how to make a game for iOS and Android using Unity. Keep an eye out for that very soon. Finally, on Tuesday night, I asked the Blackthorn Prod community for their feedback on whether or not I should launch the Dreadful Whispers on itch.io first and then Steam, or if I should launch the game on both platforms at the same time. The feedback was amazing. However, despite people thinking that having the game on itch first would be a good idea, with much, much thought, I'm having big doubts on that. If I launch on itch.io first, then sure I'll get people buying the game and playing it. However, when the time does come for the Dreadful Whispers to release on Steam, so a month or two later because of Steam's verification process and implementing achievements and stuff, then the hype will have probably died down and people might have already seen Let's Play videos and won't feel the same urge to experience the game again themselves, since again, it is pretty short. And the positive reviews I get on Itch from some of my best supporters won't be there on Steam, so the Dreadful Whispers will struggle a lot more being featured on the front page or in the New and Trending tab, for example. On the other hand, that means the game won't come out in June, but in July, maybe even August, depending on how fast all the paperwork gets done. Plus, if I launch on Itch, I'll get lots of feedback to improve the game before the bigger Steam release. But, meh, I don't think I need that much feedback. I have family, friends, and some really good supporters helping me out with that. It's quite a dilemma, but I think it's best if I launch on both platforms simultaneously. More advice and recommendations from you guys is of course more than welcome in the comments. On Wednesday morning, I continued working on the collectible system for the Dreadful Whispers, mostly making more art and creating very rare collectibles for those who uncover some of the game's greatest secrets. And in the evening, I got ready to give a talk for the Game Dev Unchained Expo. There I shared some cool tips and tricks on making a YouTube channel to build an audience. The link to that entire talk is in the description of this video. It was a great experience, and I sure hope those of you also interested in making a channel benefit from my talk. It's quite long though, so I'm thinking of making a more polished, shorter video on this channel on the same topic. Would you be interested in seeing that? Of course, it seems like I'm constantly on the go right now, but don't worry. During the entire week, I took my time to slow down and relax. Going outside, exercising, playing games. I really enjoyed playing kids a 30 minute experience on Steam with a unique, lovely art style. Consider giving it a try, it's not gameplay heavy, just very simple and intriguing, and a testimony to the fact that your game doesn't need to be massive and super complex and long to reach an audience and inspire people. On Thursday, I began making this video, then took a break from that to work some more on the dreadful whispers. Production Crate's massive library was begging to be explored and used so I tried improving my game's cutscenes using their assets and sounds, like adding cool smoke effects or rain and snow. I basically download an mp4 file from their website and import that inside of Camtasia Studio 9, which is the editing software I use to make my YouTube videos, but also the Dreadful Whispers cutscenes. And then I import the Production Crate mp4 file with the epic effect, which is placed on a coloured background and I can simply remove that color from the clip, which leaves me with only the effect. Seriously, everything is buzzing with more life now. Then I added awesome lightning effects to the sky in certain levels. It's simply a matter of downloading a zip file via their website, extracting that, which gives me a bunch of images that make up the whole animation. And then in Unity, I simply drag and drop those images inside the animation timeline. And ta-da! An epic lighting effect. Then you can tweak the sample value here to make the animation faster or slower. Now it's Friday, I've been working on this video and I'm ready to upload it. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me, my channel and the development of my game financially every month. Stay tuned for the cool new iOS and Android game creation tutorial series, the dreadful whispers and lots more. Cheers!